Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to my talk. My name is Nong Adrid. I am an assistant professor at Utrecht University, the Netherlands. In this lecture today, I will show one specific research project related to learning what makes Catalyst good. Using a machine learning framework that is part of our atomic energy network, ANET, that we develop and make available to the scientific community. Why we are interested in machine learning for catalyst discovery? Thanks to many pioneers in this field, many simple physics-based and intuition-based descriptors of catalytic performance are known. For example, the band center can be used to predict binding energies. Nowadays, we hope that machine learning can help to identify more complex descriptors to predict more complicated properties of catalysts. Ideally, we want to predict directly the experimental catalytic activities and selectivities. We were especially interested in better catalysts for ethanol reforming. This is motivated by the idea of an ethanol economy. Bioethanol is an attractive carbon neutral field that is clean, easy to supply, and nearly as efficient as regular gas. There are some difficulties, for example, the competition with food production and greenhouse gas emissions from farming, but hopefully those can be resolved in the future. Burning ethanol is a conventional combustion engine is not actually optimal. It is cleaner and more efficient to first reform it into first hydrogen and then generate electricity with fuel cells. This is example, the design of the e-bio car that Nissan plans to commercialize already soon. It is originally planned for 2020, but it was delayed because of the COVID-19. The ethanol reforming reactions shown here produce carbon monoxide, carbon, and hydrogen. The hydrogen can directly be used in hydrogen fuel cell. The carbon monoxide and carbon can be further oxidized to CO2. And CO2 can be absorbed by plants, for example, sugarcane that are used for ethanol production. So overall, this process is in principle carbon neutral. The main challenge is that side reactions make ethanol reforming inefficient. Unfortunately, ethanol reforming competes with other reactions. Over platinum catalysts, ethanol can also undergo decarbonylation reaction or total decompositions these reactions are not needed. Since they result in loss of hydrogen and catalyst deactivation. So better ethanol reforming catalysts are therefore needed. Predicting the reforming selectivities is difficult. The activities of tangential metal catalysts for ethanol reforming can be predicted using, for example, density functional theory simulations. As you can see from these two examples of the publications, as you can see from these two example publications, the D-band center is an electronic properties of the catalyst atoms and can be calculated from DFT. This relationship is not perfect, and there is no such relationship known for predicting the selectivity. So Conventional descriptors are not very really successful to predict the ethanol reforming selectivities, as I show in the previous slides. The question is now, can we develop a machine learn descriptor for the reforming activities and selectivity? First, we need to find out if enough data is available to construct a machine learning model. In 2006 and 2008, the Shen Group at Columbia University demonstrated that Platinum-based monolayer bimetallic catalysts are promising for ethanol reforming. They investigated these two types of catalyst models. In the first case, show here on the left, a tangential metal monolayer is deposited on top of the platinum one-on-one -on -one surface. The second case, another monolayer of platinum is deposited on the tangential metal layer. The group reported the activities and selectivities, for example, titanium, iron, and nickel. So could it be that other tangential metals make better catalysts? In principle, we could calculate the reaction profiles for many different catalysts with DFT. For selectivity prediction, 
we need to know the red determining step. This means we need the activation energies of all possible CC bond breaking, CO bond breaking, right? For the ethanol decomposition, this is a large number of possible reactions. Here, you see a partial reaction network, the blue CC bond breaking, the orange CO bond breaking. So there are so many different uh, reactions and it would be very time consuming to calculate activation energies for all reaction steps over many different catalysts using the FT. So from this all partial reaction networks, I name all of the reaction bond breaking and bond forming of CC and CO bond in 14 reactions, as you can see as a number here, one, two, and until 14. So we were wondering if it is, would be possible to fit a machine learning model directly to the experimental activity and selectivity. Could we predict the performance of new catalysts? The challenging is that the experimental data set is extremely small. Machine learning models for catalysts are often fitted to thousands of data points from the FT calculation, but the data set by the Shen group only contains seven data points and it would be very time consuming to perform all additional experiments. So this is the project that we worked out together. The solution was we combine machine learning and first principle calculations to extract the knowledge from a small set of experimental data. Here, we decided to use a two-step approach. First, a complex nonlinear machine learning model, Gaussian process regression, GPR, and random forest regression, RFR, is used to speed up the prediction of activation energies and tangent state energies. Then a second set or a second simpler linear model is constructed to predict reforming activities and selectivities. We expect that the activities and selectivity are simple functions of the reaction profile so that linear model should be sufficient. So first model. To predict the selectivity and activation energies of competing reactions are needed, but DFT activation energy calculations can be computational quite demanding. The bond straight Ewans, Polanyi's, or BEP principles can be used to approximate activation energies based on the reaction energy. In this diagram, the potential energy of the reactants and products are shown. When the relative energies this means the reaction energies in blue changing, the activation energies in orange also changing. The question is how accurate the BEP principles are. Therefore, we also perform direct activation energy calculations using not elastic band or NEB methods. This is an example for another system we show here. These kind of simulation are quite time consuming and require uh, human expert knowledge to be set up. To accelerate the NEB calculations, we made use of the recent introduced machine learning methods by Dr. Torres and Professor Bilgard, published in PRL 2019. The top figure shows how the GPR potential energy surface become more accurate with sampling. The bottom figures show how the uncertainty of the predictions changes with the part distances here. So we can now parameterize and validate a BEP methods for the predictions of tension state energies. This means it is assumed that the activation energies is proportional to the reaction energies. Here on the left, you see the activation energies of CC and CO breaking reactions on different catalyst surface plotted against reaction energies. We use leave one out cross validation models and the plotted points are predicted the BEP method fitted on all other data points. The correlation is not bad, but actually also not great. Converted to transition states, energies related to the energies of absorbed ethanol, we get the plotted on the right. So the cross validation error estimate is to 0 0.45 EV. The BEP model is not too bad, but we were curious if we can do better with a complex nonlinear machine learning model. We fitted a Gaussian process regression model and a random forest regression model and combined both models by averaging the error. 
As features, we choose reaction energies, electronegativities, nearest neighbor distance, and adsorption energies of ethanol. As you can see in the plot here, the predictions of machine learning model are better. So all points center around the diagonal. The cross-validation error improved by around 30% compared to BEP method. It is remarkable how good the simple of a BEP model in comparison, but our machine learning model is better. Using the machine learning model one, we could generate a large database of tangent state energies. These energies are now entered as features into the second machine learning model. The second machine learning model is trained to predict the experimental reforming activity and selectivities. The data set is small, so the machine learning model has to be simple. So we use or we consider the linear model. With the FT absorption energies and machine learning tantrum state energies, we now uh, complete reactions profiles. We expect that the reforming activities and selectivity are simple functions of the reaction profile. We define the activities and selectivity based on three competing reactions that I showed you earlier. The total activities is then sum up of the activities of the three reactions, like you can see here. The reforming activities is a small a, and the reforming selectivity is given by the ratios. Instead of analyzing our predicted reaction profiles manually, we fitted a linear regression model of the activities to the 14 reaction energies and the 14 transient state energies. We used Lasso model to determined the most important features. The resulting activities model depends only on three features, two tension states energies and one reaction energy, like you can see here. The model only depends on two reactions, one CC breaking reaction and one CO breaking reaction. Lasso was able to identify the most important reaction steps for activity prediction. For the selectivity prediction, we first rescale the experimental selectivity data with the logic function. This way, we make sure that the predicted selectivity is between 0 and 1 or 0 to 100%. The model of logit selectivity then depends on four features or five parameters. Three reaction steps enter the model show here. Note that the first reaction also occurs in the activity models. Interestingly, all these three reactions are only CC bond breaking reactions. Validation, activities and selectivity models. So the activity and selectivity model represents the experimental data very well, like you can see here. So these two plots, left and right, show again prediction from leave one out cross validations. The error estimates are 0 0.001 monolayer for the activities model and 2.4% for selectivity models. The results seem to be too good, right? So maybe we need to find more models to validate our machine learning models. So we find and we decided to select another uncertainty quantification for the selectivity. The selectivity model appear more accurate in leave one out cross validation than we had expected. Maybe some of the reference data points are strongly correlated so that the cross validation score are not representative. The selectivities model depend on five parameters and our reference data is only consists of seven experimental data points. Therefore, we constructed a second selectivity model by fitting the total activities. The selectivity can then be calculated as activities ratio. We compute both selectivity models to get a better error estimates. Here in this plot, we include now all 3D tension methods. And you can see that the error bars are generally higher than the cross validation score, but acceptable. So the largest error bars as seen for, for example, vanadium, platinum, platinum, and platinum, zinc, platinum. This slide show overall predicted reforming activities and reforming selectivities of 3D tension metals. As you can see here, this is the output that we plot together for both 
uh, of the parameter that we have. So the selectivity has large errors bar for some of the materials, but this is not only for catalysts that are not interesting because of low activities and selectivities. The red that lie connected, this is the best previous known materials. This means our search found four catalysts that are potentially more active and more selective, especially the cobalt platinum platinum looks promising. Note that we did not yet consider the stabilities of the catalyst. Many of the bimetallic catalysts are metastable, and it is hard to predict with computational only which uh, metastable materials can be made. So an experimental confirmation of the stabilities would be best. All of our machine learning models that I discussed today are standard and based on scikit-learn. Our models can obtain from this GitHub link. I find that it's important that research is reproducible. And this is why we generally try to publish our database and machine learning models. This is also it's, uh, in the spirit of the open science community. So I'm talking about this here because uh, reproducibility of machine learning research in chemistry has become an issue. Together with six colleagues who are experts on machine learning in chemistry, we recently formulated a checklist for machine learning publications in chemistry. Hopefully, this can provide some guidelines for authors and maybe also for reviewers. In summary, I hope I could demonstrate that using machine learning can help to learn what makes catalysts good. We propose a two-step machine learning approach to integrate small experimental data sets and large first principle data sets. We combine machine learning and first principle calculations to extract knowledge from a small set of experimental data. And in my opinion, it is important that research is reproducible. Sharing database and machine learning models in the spirit of open science, what would be beneficial to the scientific community. This is my last slide. I would like to thank my collaborators and facilities, the team at Columbia, Chen Wang, How You Go, and also the collaborators at Stuttgart, April Cooper. Especially this work that the collaboration with Jing Wang Chen Group at Columbia, the discussion with Dr. Hybersons from BNL, and also the discussion with Dr. Urban at Columbia. I would also like to thank the financial support from Department of Energy to support this work, the computational resources from EXIS and CFN Bukhaven National Lab. And finally, I would like to thank uh, the invitation from the organizers. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much.